Hi friends, my name is Chetan Pardeshi. Let us start with the ninth chapter that is social health. So parents are always telling their children to go out and play. There is a change in lifestyle now. People are worried about their children because these children are sitting in front of the TV or they are just playing video games. Or there are some games which are there in mobile and hence these students most of the time whatever free time they have they are engaged in such kind of activities now playing video games for some time is okay but if you play it for many hours together that leads to complications so why the children of your age are instructed same in each home this is the question that they are asking us. 8, 9, 10 standard, even first standard students, they are just playing games on either mobile or laptop or some, they are just sitting in front of the TV. TV is called as an idiot box. Now there are many reasons for it. One of the reasons is that you get engaged in it for a very long time. If you are looking at some educational programs, it's okay, but that too should be time bound. When you sit in a place for a very long time, there is a word called as couch potato. You keep sitting in one place for a very long time. Remember, your body needs to move. Otherwise, the blood will not circulate properly. And hence, you need to go from one place to another. When you go out, when you play, when you talk to others, when you make relationships with others, healthy relationships with others, all these things automatically happen. Now in olden days, people used to live in villages and they did not have these computers and laptops and other things, TVs. They used to talk, socialize, go from one place to another. Vehicles were limited, they had to walk. So exercise was nothing but a part of life. Now what we do is, we sit at home, watch TV, go out in a vehicle and sit there and do work. Most of our lifestyle is sedentary. We are sitting and doing work. And hence, this is detrimental to our future. Not good at all for our body. We need to stretch a little bit. We need to walk, we need to run. I am a teacher. I'll tell my example. I get exercise sometimes. Normally I try to walk stairs. I do not use elevator. So whole day I'm sitting. So whole day I'm doing work. But physical exercise is very less. Same thing is true with you people. So it is very important for you people to get out, to walk, play a little bit. So that sweat comes, you start sweating. That is when circulation of blood is happening to all the sweat. Proper circulation is happening. Now, our lifestyle has been changed to some extent in this age of technology. Each person is busy in his own daily routine. Every day I get up, I go to work, I come back, the routine continues. Same thing is true for everybody. How much is it scientifically correct? Earlier we have studied the importance of physical health, cleanliness and staying healthy. So in the earlier chapters, last year also, you have studied how important health is. Health is nothing but physical, mental, social well-being of a person. When a person is physically fit, mentally fit and socially fit, Three concepts are there, physically, mentally, socially. When he is in a good equilibrium, balanced state, then we say that he is healthy. Now, classify your classmates into following groups depending upon observations for a week. So look at the students in your class, observe them and you can classify them as Highly interactive, occasionally interactive, non-interactive. So in my class, there are three girls 
who are constantly talking, giving answers. Others are just sitting. If I ask some questions to some, some of them will answer. The rest of them are just quiet. So, highly interactive. Some of them are highly interactive. Occasionally interactive. Some of them, when I ask them questions, they get up and give the answers. And non-interactive, even if I ask questions to them, they do not answer. If I tell them to give their own opinion, they are not able to give that. Now, observe and discuss. Observe the following chart. Discuss about relationship of various factors shown therein in social health. So at the center, there is factors affecting social health and there are some points given. Let us consider these points one by one. The first point is education. What kind of education you are getting? What kind of environment you are living? That affects your social health. If you have good teachers, good environment, nice friends, then education will improve your social health. You go and interact with the students, with your friends. You come to know a lot because they are from different backgrounds. Financial status. Of course, those who have a lot of money can afford to have a lot of books, can afford tuitions, and hence the social health improves. Gardens. Now this question was asked to me, how gardens improve social health? As we discussed, everybody is really busy in this routine work. In the morning, you start your day and at evening you don't know how the day goes by it's very fast because of routine there are two things that routine can do it can make you or break you if you start a new routine like study or exercise or some spiritual practice with routine it will make some changes in your lifestyle but if you do not change the routine, you become impaired. You cannot change at all then. For example, those who work for a very long time, like 30, 40 years in one place. And when they are retired, they don't know what to do. If somebody is in jail for whole of his life, when he comes out, he doesn't know what to do. He cannot interact with the people around. He has suicidal tendency. He wants to get rid of his life. Because he is used to stay in the jail. His body is adapted to the routine of jail. Now, gardens play an important role in breaking this routine. Monday to Saturday or Monday to Friday, you go to work and on Sunday, you can enjoy your holiday in garden. There is greenery everywhere, there is a soothing effect, clean air and that's really refreshing. You become refreshed because of gardens. Next is social physical conditioning of the surrounding. This is what we have discussed just now. How is the society, how are the places which are there around you, those surroundings are going to help you to have a good mindset. And that's going to affect your social health. Social environment of the surrounding. Then residential area. Where are you living? Are you living in a place which is having a lot of adverse conditions? There is water problem. There is power problem. People around are not good. If all these things are there, that is going to affect your social health. On the contrary, if you have a place where there is encouragement, there are facilities then automatically your social health will improve what are toilets now this question was asked to me one of my students how toilet improves social health as we have seen health is nothing but physical mental social well-being of a person when the pay, when the person is well on all these three sides then we can say he is healthy or she is healthy if you consider the number of toilets in India, for women, they are really scarce, very less in number. And hence, the women, they drink less water. 
they are constantly under tension when they will reach home. If they want to go and visit a toilet, there is no toilet around. So they suffer a lot. That is going to affect the social health. So clean toilets is really essential. Political conditions, political parties, they play an important role in social welfare. If they take part and do something for social welfare, that's going to affect the social health of the society. Then playgrounds. Same thing as we said for gardens, playgrounds. So children, they are sitting in four, inside the four wall in a classroom. For four or five hours, they need some refreshments. They need to refresh themselves in clean air. They can walk around in the playground. They can play some games in the playground. Before the school, after the school. That will really help to build social health. So if there is a team, they will learn friendship, working together as a team on the playground. So playgrounds are really essential. Social treatment, social safety. How are you treated socially? So there are many differences between human beings. And human beings treat each other based on so many things. And there is a lot of conflict in the society based on religion, based on color, based on financial status. All these things come together and this will dictate or this will result in something which we call a social treatment. Social safety. Are the women safe? Are the men safe? Are we safe around? Is the locality safe? Can we send our children to play out? So there is kidnapping, there are murders, there are so many wrong things going on. So are you safe? If you feel safe, that's going to affect the social health. Education and job opportunity, transport facilities, roadways, railways, waterways, all these things come under transport facility. Are they available in plenty and in, are you conveniently getting the transport? If not, it's going to affect your social health. Education, of course, we've discussed. Job opportunities. If a person is highly educated and doesn't get job, he will be frustrated. That is going to affect his social health. Satisfying basic need. Food, clothing, shelter, medicine. These are the basic needs of human beings. If you could satisfy that, then only it will affect, that will improve the social health. So out of the various aspects of social health, we have thought about only one in the above mentioned activity. Social health is the ability of person to establish relationships with other people. How you interact with other? How you behave with them? Are you happy to stay with them? That is called as the social health. Ability to change one's own behavior according to the changing social conditions is an important characteristic of social health. I give this example. We as human beings are highly adaptable. If it is cold outside, we wear warm clothes. If it is hot outside, we wear clothes suitable to the environment. We have fan to reduce the body heat. We have AC to reduce it. Air conditioners. We build houses, protect us from natural calamities, natural things. Like sunlight, if there is intense sunlight, we'll have an umbrella to protect us. We can sit inside our house, going inside a car. All these things help us to adapt to the changing environment. Various factors like strong personality, having a large number of friends, strong personality. Even if adverse conditions are coming to you, you should be strong. That kind of strong personality will give you social health. You will become healthy. Large number of friends. When you are in distress, when you need help, your friends will help you. You need to have a lot of friends. And relatives. Proper use of time during loneliness with peer group. Trust in each other. Respect and acceptance for others. So do you accept your friends? Do you trust them? That's the question. If yes, then you are lucky. You have 
trustworthy friends. That's really nice. So how do you spend your leisure time? When you're lonely, what do you do? I personally see YouTube videos to improve my knowledge. I learn something. So, which activities do you do when you are free? You are known by that. How you spend your free time? That's going to tell whether you are on the path of success or not. Are you trying to improve yourself? That's the question. So we have seen various factors affecting social health. Now what are the factors disturbing the social health? We will be covering it in the next video. Please see the link below. Next video will be coming in it. Thank you.